It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. <laughs> Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots back for another week of the Brilliant Idiots podcast. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're remote. I'm remote at home. Andrew's remote in Miami. Because mm. um, Andrew sold out. Ta- he sold out, bro. Facts. He sold out. He sold out. Facts. Hold on. Hold Facts. On. This is what I'm realizing. This is what I'm realizing about Andrew. Facts. We talk, about, we talk about speaking things into existence. Hold on, hold on. Right. Hold on. Sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get my let me get my outfit ready. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on one second. All right. Keep going. Keep going. Sigue. 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 Amigo. Hey. Que we, 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 we talk about speaking things into existence. Oh, one moment. One moment. Hey, Charlotte, one moment. I just have to take my ginger yes, shot. Yes. I got to take my ginger shot. My ginger is <laughs> good. Listen, I'm only using two examples, right? First example, Netflix is dead, right? <laughs> it's over for Netflix, okay? Boom, show saves America on Netflix. Not mad at it. Second one, New York is alive. <laughs> New York ain't going nowhere. <laughs> New York is thriving. All you people leaving New York is pussy. Okay. <laughs> now, show just looking full Miami Vice. You even went and got you a goddamn machete. Hey, you have to protect yourself Bro. down here. It's different down here. The life is different down here in Miami. You have to protect yourself. You don't know who could be coming around the corner. I live in a to house. With the Haitians? Say what? You trying to blend in with you trying to blend in with the Haitians? Hey, oh, I, I know Alex. I know I know I, Alex down there saying he Haitian now. Alex got a whole new haircut. He got he got a little dreadlock coming out of his head. <laughs> Alex today this morning when he meet me he says sapoise. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> he says sapoise. Tell me why you left the Miami. Why did you go to what was the what was the science behind it? Ah, man, New York is dead, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, James, James Alton just tried to tell you. Okay? Man, fuck James, bro. That shit was alive back then. Then that shit died, bro. It's, it's different now. Listen, you don't think it's no hope for a return from New York? Nah, New York is great. New York is alive. I still got my studio out there. There's no question. I still got my home out there. And um, it's going to be rough, man. I'm going to tell you why it's going to be rough for New York. I'll say this. Sorry to interrupt. I'll just say why we came down. Um, I got a stand-up special to do, bro. I'm not mad at you. So I got to get back into I got goddamn sun. Say what? You think I'm gonna be mad at you for being in the sun? No, I don't care Florida? if anybody's mad, bro. I woke degree, up this morning. Plus degree weather, bro. I woke up this morning. I fed some ducks, you know, in the river by my house or a canal. I don't, don't know what the fuck it is. I saw a manatee. You know what I mean? I, I literally, I, I took my dog into the pool. You know, it's a lot of beautiful things happening over here, man. I chopped you down some very, things. You asked a very valid question on What's Instagram that? this morning, though. What's that? How do you get any work done in Miami? I've oh, been you can't. That my whole life. Oh no, you can't. It's over. It's over for me. My career is it's done. I already know. It's done. <laughs> you listen. Sarah's question. There's no. There's no comedy scene in Miami like that, right? No, the clubs are all open in Florida. So, in all seriousness, why do we come down here? Is because uh, I I figured for the next three months. We build out a studio out here. The fucking studio is incredible. I mean, you can see it on the flagrant episode that we dropped. When this comes out, it'll be yesterday. But, um, and I figured, yo, let's go down. Let's be in the sun. Everything in New York is closed. When it was warmer weather, I didn't mind it because we could eat outside, right? But now it's too cold to be outside and they won't legally allow you inside. So New York will never die. New York is the people that make the city. But the politicians are trying their best to fucking crush it. They're trying their best to kill it. And this is on Cuomo, this is on de Blasio, this is on all these fucking retards. 
And uh, it's a real shame. So I was like, fuck it. We're going to go down to Miami for three months. We'll cook up a fun little comedy scene out here. We'll spend some time in the sun. We're fortunate enough that we're in a financial situation where we can literally just recreate a studio in Miami and fly the whole team down. And some of us drove, et cetera. So we are very lucky. Don't get me wrong. We are incredibly lucky to be in this situation. Not everybody can be in this situation. But I promise you, if they could be, they would. And I, and I wouldn't fault that. anybody for that. And that's the point, right? That's why I want to get in the positively brilliant what a fucking idiot. You're absolutely right about the politicians. And you have to put them in the what a fucking idiot category because they don't live like the people. And when you're Governor Cuomo or when you're fucking de Blasio or whoever, you got a fucking backyard. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can go fucking get some fresh air. All right? If you live in New York City, and, and you raise a good point, if you live in New York City and, it, and right now it's cold, you're in like a two bedroom apartment. It's like four of y'all in there. Where are you going? Mm -hmm. You fucking drive yourself crazy. Uh huh. So you wonder why so many people are leaving the city. They're leaving the city because they're trying to keep their mental and emotional health intact. 100%. Let's say you work from home, right? You work from home or you go to school from home. So you're in, you're in your house for that all day. Imagine you have kids you also got to take care of. They're in the house all day. They can't get their energy out. They're going crazy. You try to go out. You can't go out for a meal. You can't do anything. There's literally nothing. We're back to quarantine. In New York right now, it's the same as quarantine. Yeah. I know they're saying they're opening up restaurants yeah. in February, but they've always said they're going to open up shit, and then they shut shit back down. It, I understand what they're saying is that we want to protect people. We want to save people, et cetera. I get that. But you are fucking killing people. You're killing businesses. It's criminal what they're doing to businesses. It's absolutely disgusting. And um, it's just a fucking shame, man. It's, it, I mean, it's an absolute shame. So we came down to the free state of Florida to put these antibodies to work. We already had corona, baby. We're out here. You know what I'm saying? Florida don't give a fuck. Let me tell you something. When you walk into a place with a mask on here, they look at you. Like, what's wrong with him? They, they're they like, does he have it? I think he got it. Like, if you're wearing a mask, something's up with you. So, it feels like what? It's how we used to look at Asian people before Corona. Son, 100%. Remember before Corona, when an Asian person was wearing a mask, we were like, yo, what, what's going on with you over there? Like, you got some shit? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, is there yeah, something yeah, I don't yeah. know about? Lo and behold, yes. But now... When they, I swear to God, I walked into a bar and I was driving down. I was in St. Augustine, Florida. It's the north of Florida. It's the oldest city in North America. I'm in there. I walk into this bar. There's live music happening in the bar, right? Nobody has a mask. There's literally, they are paying a man to shout without a mask at strangers who also don't have masks. <laughs> Everybody's loving it. I, I'm wearing a mask from now on. Even when I, even when all of this is like, like, well, we're past the worst of this. Mm -hmm. I'm doing like I'm, I'm doing like the Asians. Asians are positively brilliant wearing the mask. Because if you think about all the disgusting shit, bro, being at an airport with all of those people is disgusting. Like breathing all of that different air that everybody's bro. letting out is disgusting. I'm wearing a mask from now on when I'm in crowded places. Once you get them antibodies, bro, you don't give a fuck. I'm out here snorting up sneezes like it's nothing, dude. It means <laughs> they only last nothing three months. to me. Say what? They only last three months. Antibodies only last three months. Not mine. I got the longer antibodies. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I got the whole year. I got. I paid for the they whole year. I didn't pay for three months. They, I got the whole year. <laughs> hey, they got them. Hey, they got them new colorways of COVID now, bro. Same. They got the cut. They got different colorways now. I'm down here in Florida, bro. They got all the strains: the UK strain, the Asian strain, the California strain. All the strains. It don't matter. We out here. Nah, it's coming. Nah, it's out here. It's out there. Listen, I'm not. Listen, I'm not mad. I don't know what to uh, to make of any of this anymore. All of it seems so hypocritical. The fact that the Super Bowl is this Sunday, and they got what thirty percent, forty percent capacity. The fact people can have parties certain places, but they can't others. I don't know what the fuck. Bro, is going tell on. me the how. Only thing I can tell people is live your goddamn life. I guess. Tell me how some of the people, some of the NBA teams allow fans, and some don't. What in the fuck? Is the point of that? If you're worried about getting the players infected, why the fuck are you allowing courtside seats? Everybody's making a big deal about courtside Karen cursing out LeBron. Nobody's talking about why some bitch and her husband were courtside at a basketball game when 90% of the teams in the league don't let anybody in the stands. It makes no sense. Well, listen, 
That, that might be the only way to stop LeBron, some good old-fashioned germ warfare. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> like some good old-fashioned some, some good old fashioned biological Bro, warfare, baby. Let, that's, go, they let sent Coach that girl Karen in. sit there, take the goddamn mask off, mm -hmm. yell and scream at him, let that saliva hit him. He got to miss a couple weeks. Bro, that's genius. Karen was in there with Come a full on. face of makeup, Agent Orange, trying to take her ass out. That is genius, bro. Hey, I'm going to tell you something. She's mm -hmm. a fucking idiot, though, because she should have been arrested. And I'm going to tell you why she should have been arrested. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. all about double standards, right? Yeah. <laughs> if LeBron James, a six foot eight black man, yeah. said to that little white woman, I'm going to fuck you up. Yeah. What would happen to him? Um, I, I think nothing would ever happen to LeBron James, no matter what he said. Not LeBron. I'm just talking about the, the prototype of that man. Oh, a, another six foot eight black man. If yes. if a six foot eight man, black I'm a man fuck you up. said I'm gonna fuck you up to a clearly innocent, beautiful young white lady, <laughs> right? Twenty five, by the way. She looks forty six. Yes, she is. At, oh she, my When Lord. they told me she was twenty five, I was like, plus what, bruh? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. When I found out you, I couldn't believe it, dude. Aging horribly. Aging like an avocado. Not good. Not good at all. But if a six foot eight black guy said anything to most people, that is a crime. That is a crime. That is a crime. <laughs> Even if a six no, if a is. six foot eight black guy said to her, Hey, do you need any help with your bag? That gets translated by the time she hears it is give me your bag. You're trying bitch. to rob me. Yes, exactly. Exactly. At six foot eight, if you're black, you need to be an athlete or else you're a threat. Everybody else will see you as a threat at six That's foot my eight. Point. It, that, so dude. imagine that. Imagine look, look, we gotta we gotta think about this. Double standards are real. If yeah. he would have said that to her, mm -hmm. he would have been arrested, he'd have been perceived as a threat. She should be perceived the same fucking way. I mean, I think yeah. I'll be honest with you. I mean, I can't speak for you as a black man, but I assume as a black man, you are absolutely terrified of white women. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, is there Carolina. anything like, uh, yeah. you're more afraid of than a white woman? It, it, it depends, right? Because there's a lot of historical context that goes with that, because, you know, back in the 1800s, so many black men would get killed and lynched for, by, for being accused by white women for things that they didn't do. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is, a, this is a thing. This isn't like people always talk about Emmett Till, but it was a million Emmett Tills. Even when you talk about Black Wall Street, Black Wall Street got burned down because a little white woman said she got raped at Black Wall Street. And they came and burnt the whole city down. Like, they always use that as an excuse to act on whatever fucking murderous, you know, plot they already wanted to do anyway. Yo, can we so, say yes. something, though? White men be I defending so. what white men be defending their women, bro. Not in this case. Yo, white Please men say, defend listen, their women. Chris, Chris yo. Ain't, no, y'all need to protect be, black women. Be goddamn, hey, white we, women, you. Hey, hey white we women, need to white protect. Men use, <laughs> you said what? You say, so what you say we need say? to protect black women the way white men used to protect white women, even if they was lying. That, oh, that's, bro, the I, every, that's the level of protection. That's the level of protection needs to be applied to black women, bro. Bro, white men use white women like Nino Brown used that little kid in New Jack City for. <laughs> You ain't heard shit. You ain't hey, heard Bert. shit about that woman's husband. That woman was sitting there courtside with her husband. Oh, bro. Hey, Bertha, go on out there and say you got raped by that black guy. We need to hang somebody. <laughs> so that's what white I'm men were using black women as, or white women as as bait. Um, that's all. White men bro. were using Straight white up. women as that's bait. It. That's it. That's Bruh. it. That's all it is. White that's white it, women it, it, are some good ass bait, bro. That's like bread for ducks. You hang a white crazy. woman out there. Oh, that was a bait and switch because Chris started it, right? Chris who? LeBron starts. Chris is the the husband's name. Chris started. Oh it. yeah. LeBron and Chris go back and forth, and then boom, bait and switch. Here comes the white woman. Mm -hmm. Got gotcha you again. Got gotcha you again, LeBron. <laughs> the funniest Yo, shit was what the announcers said when the announcers were like the announcers were like um she reminds me of that white woman on that meme that's pointing at the cat <laughs> right i never saw that meme yes you did come on knock it off everybody's seen that meme yo why, why are you so angry at me that i didn't see a meme bro everybody's seen <laughs> yeah, that meme. the white woman pointing at the cat so that's a lot of yo you're coming at me very aggressive right now and i feel threatened <laughs> 
you feel like you're six eight right now. That's all I'm trying to say. You're talking to me in a way that you are six eight, bro, and I need you to calm down before I have to call somebody. Listen, you see the you see you seen the meme where the white woman says one thing and then the cat says another. So it's like the white woman is is, is you never seen that shit? Nah, bro, dude. I, yo, yo. I like women, Alex, bro. Alex, show him, Alex. You know what I'm saying? Saying? He like, knows what? what he's talking about. Nah, bro. Yo, I got a fiance, bro. I got responsibilities. I can't be on Reddit all day like you looking at memes, <laughs> you <laughs> nerd. Alex, Andrew, Andrew, Andrew's like, Andrew's like, I don't look at no other pussies. If you know, <laughs> I don't even pay no attention. <laughs> yo, Charlotte, you got to come down, bro. We got to get you down here. One month. One month, month, bro. I can't do a month. I got kids, bro. I got three kids. We in school. We Son, school, I just moved man. four families down here. It's easy. <sighs> you moved four <laughs> families? <laughs> yeah, bro. Every, every one of my guys either married or got a serious girlfriend. We just moved everybody down on a whim. On a whim. Alex, Alex came too? Alex, Alex is right a, here a behind the desk. I'm back and forth, man. Alex this built sucks. a whole studio that he decided to not tell me about the whole time he was building it. And then he comes at me, he goes, and then he comes and he tells me that he's going to build a studio right after I say we're going to Miami. Whoa, whoa, This is what happened when so you Alex, keep secrets, right? The mouse is on his screen. Alex was a sneaky studio builder? I didn't know that was the case, Alex. Yo, very no, sneaky I studio builder, bro. surprise and make an announcement and then this motherfucker has one cold dinner why, and wants to go to Miami. Yo, 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 why you need to surprise me, though? Because. You know what I'm saying? Why you need to surprise me? You inspired. Well, you inspired. Hey, 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 as, hey, surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> hey, hey, that's what a person says when they get caught. All right? I was just trying when to surprise you. Caught, hey. I was going to tell you surprise. <laughs> this is for you. Hey, I was keeping this as a surprise. Well, were you giving it to me? Were you giving the studio to me? No, it's for me, but I just wanted to surprise you with my shit. So hold on, who all came down? Alex, Akash, who else? Alex, Akash, Mark, and um, we got Miles, who's also part of my boy Dove. You met Dove. So we got the whole squad down here, all their girlfriends or wives, everybody down here, bro. I think it's, um, I think it's positively brilliant the way they believe in you. I really do. Hey, man. I really do. Now, I haven't led them astray yet. Lot. That takes a lot, bro. It takes a lot for you to bring bring the whole United Nations down to Miami yeah. just because they, they 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 love you, bro. I'm serious, man. <laughs> like, and it's a very diverse group. Alex is P Puerto Rican and black. Akash is Indian. Oh yeah, Alex leaning all um, the way into his Puerto Ricanism now that, that he's I down know, here, bro. That black owned studio shit. I know. I've I know. Never, that's, I, I know. That shit I've was black owned this. for one week, and he got down here. You started seeing these Dominican <laughs> hey, asses hey. bouncing around black all over the place. He said, "He literally." He said, "He said I'm Afro Latino." That's what he said. Well, listen. What's what's wrong with it being minority owned, Alex? No, nah, nothing wrong. It is minority owned, yeah. but it's also it black owned. Minority owned. owned. Yo, son, you want to know the real thing, bro? It's white owned, bro. Yo, get out of here with that. It's white owned, bro. It's white owned. The bi bro. the build the building is the business is. Nah, the building's owned by an Asian man. What? Oh, yeah. Wow. That yeah. sounds about right. That sounds about right. That's why. That's why Andrew Yang is about to be the next mayor in New York oh, City. Oh shit! Baby. Jokes aside, Andrew Yang is the best thing for New York. I might think, Alex. You don't. I mean, Andrew. You don't think so? Yeah. I mean, look. I don't know too much about him, but every time I've heard him speak, I thought he was uh, authentic and genuine, and uh, I think he's cozied up to the establishment a little bit, which I'm not the biggest fan of. But um, I think that. Uh, but yeah, I think he's a smart guy, and I think he's thoughtful. And I I do think he will try to do the best. That he can with New York if he wins. He's any anybody's better than De Blasio, that fucking chimp That's nippled retard. Okay? It, this, it's, it's they a gotta good go. You got you got Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams. I think he's a good good candidate. Um Isaac Wright Jr. I'm only I'm rooting for him because he's from Monk's Corner. I don't know anything about his policies or nothing else. You know what I mean? I just know he's from Monk's Corner, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And then Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang, but I, Andrew Yang has the vision, I believe, to make New York what Son, it should be at this Andrew point. Yang got to check in with me. Dubai. Andrew got to check in with me, bro. This guy. You got to check. If you come to New York, you got to check in with me, bro. You know what I'm You're saying? You're not even there no more. Why hey, do people hey, always bro. move from New York and hey. then say they got to check in? Hey, bro. Hey, bro. You got to check in with me if you come to my city that I left. Okay? <laughs> yo, 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 yo. Son, son, son. Don't come to my city that I left. 
All right? And not check in with me first. Andrew Yang still needs to shoot me a DM. I'm not having it. I'm not having no. it, Andrew Yang. Nah, he would reach out. Say what? I he got to reach out very soon. Out. TikTok. TikTok, Andrew Yang. If he wants the Schultz endorsement and everything that comes with it, you know, then he's going to have to reach out. We're going to have to get him on flagrant too. He's going to have to, we're going to have to get to the bottom of all this. All right. I think, I think he actually would be a good flagrant two guest. I'm going to tell Andrew Yang to do flagrant two. Nah, we're going to need to talk about that. <clears throat> we're going nah, to talk, he's, we're gonna need to talk he's, all he's, about I'm, that. I'm going to holler at Yang. That would be a good look for Yang. Because, I mean, he's in New York. He's, uh, he's quarantining right now because he caught the COVID. Oh, he caught it? But, yeah, he got it now. Yo, you know who Listen. also left New York City during the pandemic? Who? Speak on it. Who? I don't know. Tell me. Andrew Yang. Well, yeah, he had he got a uh, he had a, a house what upstate, right? I don't know. I'm not exactly sure, but but I'm, listen, I'm not, my my point is I'm not even mad at that. I just hate when like the and I don't even want to call Andrew Yang an elite. I just hate when these politicians who are so out of touch with the way regular people are living are in charge of all of these everyday decisions. Like even with the fucking stimulus checks, it's like yo Nancy Pelosi invested a half a million dollars in the like Tesla. Like they said between a half a million and a million dollars in the Tesla. Cause she knew that Joe Biden was coming with his new energy plans and something like that. So they're questioning her ethics. But my, but my whole point is, yo, people are out here starving. Bro. Y'all playing fucking big dick penis contest with people's lives. Just Bro. fucking come to a solution and pay people to fucking their money. Yo, we're back to we're back to the establishment. They don't really care. They'll try to squeeze you until we revolt. And then when we revolt, they take the foot off of the, the gas a little bit and you get a little tiny little taste. That is the game. That's how it works. And look, things maybe are a little bit more calm in this situation. You got to go out and get yours a little bit more. But we're back to the lies. I mean, we're back. In, you know, you saw what happened recently. They're like, oh, the Taliban is really popping up in Afghanistan. Looks like we're going to have to stay there a little longer. Of course. Three weeks. What do you mean back to, though? We never left them. Son, I don't know. I haven't been keeping tabs on the Taliban, but apparently they get shit popping <laughs> no, again, I'm talking bro. about the lies. We've never left the lies. That's all the gov That's all our government does is lie to us, whether it's Republican or Democrat. Yeah. That's literally all they do. That's all they do is lie to the American people. I'm Yo. at the point where I'm not even sure a rich person can be in a political position of power. Yeah, but I'm do you want honest. a broke person to do it? I don't want a broke person to do it. Not not broke, but I want somebody who's really committed their life to public service in a real way. I don't think politicians, I don't think all politicians are public servants. What about Bernard? I think you have to have, Bernie's definitely a public servant. Even though he gets his money, Bernie's still definitely a public servant. And but why can't you Bernie's get your money? Because his, his message hasn't changed. Facts. Facts. His message hasn't changed. All he is. His message hasn't changed. His message has always been a message for the people. He wants health, free health care for people, free college. He believes in universal basic income. That's giving. You know what I mean? That's yeah. giving. That's making sure people got the basics. That's why I like Andrew Yang. Same reason. Andrew Yang believes in the basics. If you can't believe in the basics, meaning that a person should have proper room and board, be able to go to the doctor when they want to, get a good education, and put a little extra money in their pocket, what else do we fucking want? It's really not that much, bro. It's really not that much. So I'm on board know. with Andrew Yang. I don't know any of the motherfuckers that are going for it besides him. But if he checks in with me, he has my support. <laughs> but you got to check in with the kid. You can't be mayor of New York from now on without checking in. That's Everybody knows that, bro. Hey, de Blasio was the last mayor who didn't check in. And what happened? Shit the bed. There's shit on that bed. Right? It's wiped all over that bed. There's shit on that fucking bed because he didn't check in. You check in with the kid and it could change your life. He's going to have to FaceTime so me or something because your boy in Miami. But in all seriousness, you got to check in. That's what it is, bro. Listen, um, also positively brilliant. Got to give it up for the fucking GOAT. Who? Top, top three greatest white men of all time easily. Talk to me. Tom, Tom fucking Brady. What'd he okay. do? What the fuck you mean what he do? Oh, going he's back in, to the he's soup? In your new, he's in your new home going back to the goddamn Super Bowl. That's what Tom fucking Brady did. Can I tell you okay? one reason why I respect Tom Brady? Tell me why you respect Tom Brady. As soon as I got to Miami, Tom checked in. 
<laughs> Shut the fuck up. Tom, Thomas Tom, Edward, Thomas Edward Patrick Brady Jr. checks in with nobody. Thomas Edward Patrick Brady called me up. He's like, hey, listen, I heard you just moved down to Miami. I just wanted to check in out of respect. <laughs> I just wanted to check in out of respect, right? Right? I literally, he called in out of respect. I thought that was beautiful that he was doing that. That's considerate. That's kind. Now I will root for you in the Super Bowl. Simple as that. Do you ever stop and do you ever stop and say to yourself, like honestly, like Mm -hmm. really stop and think to yourself, man, I lived through the Tom Brady era, bro. You know nobody's gonna believe this shit in twenty years. It's it's, nobody's it's unbelievable. Nobody's gonna believe this shit in thirty years. It's unbelievable, and you know it's it's such a shame that we gave uh, Belichick so much credit. I think Belichick will go down in history as the most overrated coach in history. Uh, you can no, see all stop. these. Come on, now, not, no, stop, no, stop, stop, no, stop, no, no, no. You can see all these players starting to say. I think Danny Amendola just said the other day. He's like, the Patriot way was the Tom Brady way, and the Patriot way went out the window when Tom Brady left. The fact that Tom Brady is forty three years old, right, not even close to the prime of his career, and he is in the Super Bowl with a completely different team is absolutely unprecedented, unbelievable what is happening right now. If he wins it, forget it. If he wins it, it crushes Belichick. I don't think Belichick ever wins another Super Bowl again. I'd be surprised if he makes the playoffs again. I think that we looked at Belichick in a way that we were were so baffled by what Tom had accomplished because he is so unathletic looking, so we couldn't fathom that this person who was so slow could actually do an athletic feat that – all of the humans that have come before him could never do. So we're like, it's got to be the shoes, but it's got to be the coach. We're looking for an it's got to be reason for why he could accomplish all this shit. And he just took that away. We were giving Belichick all the credit. It wasn't about Belichick. It was fucking Tom this whole time, man. Uh, that's, this, is, this is a great conversation. I'll tell you why. I think Bill Belichick and his coaching staff over the years have been in- incredible. But I think one thing all coaches have to realize, all coaches, Mm. I don't give a fuck how good a coach you are. If you don't have the talent and the personnel, it doesn't matter. Yep. It doesn't matter. You can't coach players up. I don't think so. I don't I don't think you can coach players up. I think if you have the talent and you have the personnel, your coaching schemes can make decent average players better and and, and great players legendary. Yeah. We've seen that over and over in Bill Belichick's scheme. But a great player like Tom can go play for a coach that's decent and have the right talent around him and still succeed. Yeah. That's why I think that, but I don't think, I can't sit here and act like Bill Belichick is, is garbage. No, 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 no. Garbage no, juice. Not, no. nah, garbage nah, juice. No, no, no. He has a losing record without it, Tom Brady in his career. In his career. Losing record without Tom Brady. He had one season with the really? Patriots where Tom was injured. Yeah, and I think they did well. I think they had Matt Castle and they won Matt 10 Cassell. games. Matt Cassell. Matt Castle. Yeah. yeah. I think they won 10 games, but I don't even think they made the playoffs. So no, they made the playoffs that year. I don't think they did. I think they had a good they record, but I don't think they made the know, playoffs. Because Matt ended up winning. I think Matt went and signed with the Chiefs. Didn't he get a big contract with the Chiefs after that? Mm, not sure where exactly he went. but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, look it Chiefs. up. But I don't think they made the playoffs without, without him. He comes in. He changes the fucking game. He changes the mood. He changes absolutely everything. Belichick has, you know, a past MVP. It's not like Cam Newton was a bum like yes he's obviously different than what he used to be but this is not like a trash quarterback this is a guy who was at one point the MVP of the league and they can't even go to the playoffs come on bro this guy don't have it yeah, I mean, you don't they, have won, the they, juice. They, they, they won four games they, they, like I mean but they were terrible that's one of the reasons bro that, uh, that, that Brady even left to begin with because he was like yo they're not putting no pay, no personnel around me I guess it is what it is but the thing is, is that we had no problem removing all the credit. Maybe not you and me, but some people had no problem removing all the credit from Tom, calling Tom a system quarterback. Well, you know what? I think Belichick is a system coach, and that system requires Tom fucking Brady, and when you don't have Tom fucking Brady, you don't have a system that works for Belichick. So oh, I'm sorry. Tom, Bra- uh, Tom, Tom Brady is a GOAT. Like Tom Brady, and, and I, I, I put this on Instagram, and I just posed the question. I don't know what the answer to it is. I think that with the degree of difficulty of football, Tom Brady's age, he's 40, what, 42, 43, 43 years bro. old, going to his 10th Super Bowl, bro, he's got to be considered the greatest athlete of all time. I don't even think it's questionable, dude. 
I don't see how you can question it. And, and I know people like to say things like LeBron can jump and do. I'm not. T- I'm talking about. Yo, he's 43. Let fucking Aaron Donald hit you at 43. Let Aaron Donald tackle the, the average 43-year-old. And let's see if they just get up son, for another down. I slipped yesterday and I hit my shin. And I don't think I'm going to walk the same for the rest of my life. That's what it feels <laughs> see like. See what I'm I, saying? <laughs> I'm 37 years old. If I bang things the wrong way, literally, if I sit in a car in a position for too long, I'm going to be like, oh, this is weeks of recovery. I'm never going to physically recover. From this drive that took three hours. The fact that he's getting hit by Sam, what Aaron Donald, not Sam Donald, you could take that hit, but Aaron Donald. I work out every day. Sometimes I walk up some steps. You're like, yeah, yeah. Just be like, God damn. Yeah. Yo, you, start, you start getting upset at your wife. You're like, babe, you make these steps higher? What are we- That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. He's 43 years old and yeah. he's going to his 10th Super Bowl. Yo, you know how it, yo, Shows ten Super Bowls. It's unbelievable. Ten people compare and listen. I, and, and no disrespect to LeBron, salute to LeBron. What LeBron has accomplished is great. Going to ten NBA Finals mm-hmm. is a is a feat. Going to ten Super Bowls is is virtually unrealistic. It's it's we've it's never harder. seen that. LeBron LeBron is putting himself in Tom Brady's category, right? Like. LeBron has been posting shit saying like, you know, me and Tom Brady are doing things. It doesn't matter. We're going to be in this game as long as our bodies hold up, blah, 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 blah. He's speaking about himself with Tom Brady. Tom Brady doesn't speak about himself with LeBron. LeBron is leeching off of Tom's goatness. Tom knows where he is and he's not going, yeah, me and LeBron are the same. He's like, are you out of your fucking mind? That's disrespectful to say that me and LeBron are the same. The guy got half as many rings as me. It would, it would be an I mean, insult. It would be an insult if somebody said, oh, yeah, Tom Brady is the LeBron of football. That's insulting. I don't even think it's about the ring count, man. I just think, like, yo, the degree of football and the, the degree of NFL, American football, it's just harder. Mm. Like, it, it doesn't happen. Like, the last – that's why I don't even know – I don't even – and listen, I don't know who's going to win the Super Bowl. I know it's going to be tough for the Chiefs to win. Yeah. And the only reason it's going to be tough for the Chiefs to win because – NFL teams don't repeat like that. The last team that repeated Uh-oh. back-to-back was the bitch led by the motherfucking GOAT. The GOAT. You know what I mean? Like, it's just different. You went to 10 Super Bowls, nine with one team, one with a new team. The degree of difficulty is just different, bro. I can't explain it. Like, you got to – like, I'd much rather go out there and get posted up by fucking, you know, Joel and B than fucking get hit by Aaron Donald, bro. Oh. That's all I can tell you. Without a doubt. I mean – When you even think about the salary cap limitations in football, right, compared to basketball, you you, it just puts a whole new level of respect on what Tom Brady has accomplished. Because think about it. In football, you are constantly managing that salary cap, right? And every player that you develop on your team that gets good enough, you cannot afford. You cannot physically afford it. I wonder, is the salary cap for basketball more than the salary cap for football? I'm pretty sure it is. Does anybody know that? It should be. I'm, I'm almost positive it is. But it think about be, that. Right? How, do you, how, how else do you afford three max players on a team? But think about that. Be. In football, you have 53 players to pay. In basketball, you have 13. Any of those 53 Man. players could end up being superstars, and you got to let them fucking go. It's amazing what they were able to do, what he was able to do, and the sacrifices that he made. He was the best player in football, and he was taking pay cuts to keep the team together. You're not going to find that. Let's see if Patrick Mahomes, who just signed that huge deal, let's see if he wants to play for pennies on the dollar just to win a Super Bowl. Let's see how bad he wants to win. Yeah, I would actually say that um, this has probably been Bill Belichick's worst football decision letting letting Brady go bro he tried to let Brady go before for Jimmy Garoppolo do you remember that he tried to trade Brady to San Francisco I'm pretty sure and then he was gonna have Jimmy Garoppolo be the head be the fucking QB1 for the Patriots it's mind-boggling and then Brady had to go to Bob Kraft to talk some fucking sense into Belichick, and that's what soured their relationship. But it's unbelievable. This Belichick is an idiot. Completely overrated. Stop, man. Jason he's an idiot. Stop. He's completely no, he's overrated. 
He's no, the most he's overrated not, coach in the history of sports. In the history of sports. You know what this means? What's that? This means that the New England Patriots will win the Super Bowl next year. Whenever Andrew goes this hard, we saw it with Netflix, we saw it with New York City, and New England Patriots Bro. will win the Super Bowl next year. Charlemagne, <laughs> if you want to catch fish, what do you got to do? Stir up the water, baby. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Let's fucking go. All right. <laughs> Listen. Yo, um, can I say something else while we're talking about that? Of course. All right. People that got a hundred million dollars in the bank ain't shit. They suck. And they're really bad. <laughs> and that's whack to have. So fuck all of y'all. You would <laughs> never want to have that kind of Who money? would want that? Who would want that type of responsibility to have a hundred million cash in the bank, baby? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you you getting that though? That that that's a given. That's a given. I saw Russell Peters' house yesterday. I literally saw I saw Lunell at Russell Peters' house oh, yesterday, shout to Russ, and man. I said I said that's gonna be Schultz. Let's go. I said that to myself yesterday. I did. I said that to myself yesterday. God he got an amazing house, and it's yeah. just all off touring stand up. Were you all in LA? Stand-up. No, 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 no. Uh, what the, come on, man. I got Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> What you mean? My was I in LA. Yo, you said it like I you were at a, a super next. spreader event. No, I was supposed to be in LA next, yeah, next week. But I'm like, man, so, it, that's the difficult part, right? Like I'm the guy that would fly to LA and fly right back if the I had same day. To do. You do the same, same day, day. Not, same day. Now they're like, hey, you got to fly in Monday, test for COVID. We don't tape till Wednesday. I'm like, nope. Hey, zoom. bro. Hey, bro. Zoom, 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 and a boom, boom. Hey, bro, you know where they don't do that? Florida. The free state of Florida, bro. Come be free, bro. Florida this is America. Fuck. It's about freedom, dog. Come be free, man. You come down here for a month. I'm driving on the I-95 and I look up. I'm driving on I-95 in Miami and I look up and I see a, gi a giant billboard on I-95 in Miami. And you know who's on that billboard? Who? DJ Envy, Angela Yee, and Charlemagne the Charlemagne McGay. <laughs> no, I, I, we we on in Miami. We on. I'm just saying, you're already Miami. here. You come, you spend a month. We hang out. We do some pods. You bring the family down. I mean, nah, what, what is what come. is there to I lose? In, I love I love Miami. Salute to Miami. I, that's one of my favorite places to broadcast from. I love the IHOP facilities there. My dude Logic is down there. Uh, DJ Thirty Three and the Third. He's the program director at One Hundred Three Five to Beat, and I love. The restaurant finger licking, finger licking, man. Salute to my guy E Class. Have you been to the licking? You gotta go to the licking, bro. Nah, bro. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna pull up to the finger licking, bro. Go to the one in the hood. Go to the one in Little Haiti. That's the original spot. I'm not going to Little Haiti or Big Haiti. I'm staying. But stop passing, you know. Stop passing. Send Alex in. Send Alex in with I'm gonna some send jean Al. shorts. I'm gonna send. <laughs> Then Alex in there with some jean shorts and a, <laughs> and a, a machete, a, a tank top, a loose tank top. Yeah, and have it's him going over. in and say, Sac it's on, baby." What do I got to order, uh, Charlotte? Oh, the menu is crazy. The menu at the licking is crazy because they got like everything they got fried, they got grilled. Literally, so yeah. everything they have fried, they have grilled. Like you, I, I couldn't even tell you what to order because I order different stuff every time I go there. I love the seafood rice, the lobster, the shrimp. Oh man, I don't even want to talk about it because I'm <laughs> I, like I'm. I might come down there next weekend. Nah, I might come down there. Oh, hey. You see him planting the seeds. I love the station director. I love the guy who parks the cars over there. One hundred three, one point five to beat. They're all great people. No, Son, I might come, come down on. there this weekend for real because it's Valentine's weekend. I might come slide down with the wife. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about, bro. If this is a no brainer. We have to do this. You come down. I think you check it out, and then you come down for a month. We're down here for at least three months, but then you look at the studio, and it's like we might be down here for a little longer than that. Sorry, oh, Alex no. Media. But it is what it is. I think that we'll like this lifestyle. And then when we force out these fucking cucks that are running shit in New York, okay, these piece of shit politicians that don't care about the hardworking people of New York City that are trying to earn an honest living, when we force them the fuck out, then we go back and we take over our city. Yeah. Simple now, as that. I'm going to come down there, bring some fucking blue chew. You know let's, what I mean? Some let's, killer. Let's go, you dude. Know what I'm let's go, <laughs> you know bro.
this this episode of Brilliant it is it is sponsored by Blue Chew. Okay. Okay. You can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed. All right. Listen up. Bluechew.com. That's blue like the color blue. All right. Blue Chew brings you the first chewable with the same FDA approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. You can take them anytime, day or night, even on a full stomach. So you could be ready whenever an opportunity arises. If you could benefit from more confidence where it counts, Blue Chew is the fast and easy way to enhance your performance. Blue Chew is prescribed online by licensed physicians. So you don't have to go to the doctor or wait in line. It's even cheaper than a pharmacy, and they prepare and ship it right to you in a discreet package, all right? They're made in the USA, and since Bluetooth prepares and ships direct, they're cheaper than a pharmacy, no awkwardness, and you don't have to leave the house. Right now, we've got a special deal for our listeners. Visit Bluetooth.com and get your first shipment free when you use our special promo code IDIOTS, all right? Just pay $5 shipping. Again, that's blue com. Promo code IDIOTS to try it free. Blue Chew is the better, cheaper choice, and we thank them for sponsoring the podcast. And remember, when you support our sponsors, you help make this podcast possible. So please be sure to use our promo code IDIOTS at BlueChew.com. Can Bloods use Blue Chew? It's a good question. I've been talking to a lot of Bloods about it, and um, <clears throat> yeah, the answer is yeah. Yeah, there they is should. a caveat they where should. they're allowed to use. they're allowed to use the Blue Chew. Yeah, 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 yeah. A hundred percent. It is a good question, though, because maybe we it's should find some question. version of red chew for them. You know, maybe, 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 maybe. Or we can tell them that um, it's actually called clue chew, so we call it blue chew. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean for them. You know what I mean? Got you. Got That's you. That's all I'm saying. All I'm you saying is, you want to do the manscape? Yeah, let's do the manscape, baby. All right, guys, we're going to take a break for a second. Uh, make sure your dick looks delicious. Yes, you heard me right. Might have been uncomfortable. But the reality is the only thing more uncomfortable than what I just said is having a not very delicious looking dick, okay? That's when your pubic hair is looking all scraggly, sticking out from all directions. Paint looks like a chia pet. We can't have these things happening. It's 2021, and some of us are in the southern states of America, baby. That's right. It's hot and warm and sweaty, and you need to get that gooch clean. So what are you going to do? You're going to use Manscaped, okay? It's very simple. They have all the things you need to get your penis looking perfect in a very quick amount of time. And the time thing is the biggest thing for me. Yeah, you got the lawnmower 3.0. Get in there. Trim it up. Nice and beautiful. But the reality is, it's fast. You're in the shower, okay? You're shaving with a regular razor. You're nicking your balls or your penis. You're bleeding out of your dick, which is definitely a place you don't want to be bleeding out of. When you could be doing all this trimming with a perfect, safe trimmer, impossible to cut yourself and take care of it in three minutes, maybe even less. You can have the perfect, delicious-looking dick in a quick, quick, quick amount of time. This is a no-brainer, and the way you do it is with Manscaped. Yeah, they got the creams, they got the lotions, they're going to have your balls smelling absolutely amazing. It's going to smell like a Sephora, but the reality is you're going to shave everything down with Manscaped, and you're going to do it with our offer code, Andrew. So you go to manscaped.com, you're going to get 20% off your order when you use the offer code, Andrew. Manscaped.com, offer code, Andrew. Have your dick looking delicious. Now let's get back to the show. You got any church announcements? What you yeah, got, man, we're back on the road. Well, obviously, check out the new uh, studio you could see it check out uh flagrant too um but also we're going back on the road i'm doing stand-up again man we're gonna start a weekly show out here i think in miami i'm not exactly sure when but uh i like that vibe i want to get back on stage i haven't been back on stage in a year but uh we're gonna be doing some shows coming up man we got um salt lake city that's march 5th and 6th that's sold out we got columbus ohio uh i think that's almost sold out uh the following weekend um, we have, let me tell you a bunch of these dates real quick, but, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Then we got, um, uh, Nashville, Tennessee. That's the 26th and 27th of March. Make sure you get that. Then we got Atlanta, Georgia, baby, April 2nd and 3rd. ATL. Rally, North Carolina, uh, the 9th and the 10th of April. We got West Palm Beach, Florida, the 23rd and 24th. And uh, we got a bunch more shows coming up. We're locking those dates in right now. Go to theandrewshows.com for tickets. We're going to post all those shows. And you could also go directly to those clubs. Get them before they're gone. Uh, these tickets are going fast, man. Shit is different right now. But thank you all so much for the support. What about you, Charlie? You got some some church announcements? <clears throat> you know, I just want to say thank you um, to everybody that's been pre-ordering Tamika Mallory's upcoming books. Hey. Of emergency. 
How to Win in the Country We Built. Uh, it'll be out May 11th uh, via Black Privilege, Simon & Schuster, Atria Publishing. Um, yeah, a lot of people have been pre-ordering so far, so salute to everybody that's been doing that. Thank you. Um, and salute to everybody that's been listening to the Black Effect Podcast Network, man. Uh, we launched Jess Hilarious. You know, Jess Hilarious is doing great. She's on her third episode. Uh, the We Talk Back Podcast with my girls, Hol a AJ and Tan Bam. From South Carolina, they're doing great. Uh, Glasses Malone, No Ceilings is out. Uh, of course, Ebony K. Williams, Holding Court. You know, but we got we got a, a, a bunch of podcasts on the Black Effect Podcast Network. So make sure you go check that out wherever you listen to podcasts. And I'll be making an announcement about um, one of my first Audible releases, real, real, real soon. Ooh, real soon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Real can we soon. get? Can I had, you, you know, I had a. Uh, well, I had a um, I had a I had a project that I was doing with Audible, uh, prior to to me and Kevin's situation mm. actually being announced. So this isn't a project that's that's off the the, the 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 company me and Kevin have with Audible. This is a project that I was working on, uh, prior. Right. That I actually wanted to, I wanted it to be out uh last year during election time, but we didn't get it done in fast. But it's done, and I'm um, ready to go. So I'll be making that announcement. Uh, Can you give us a little hint as far as what it's about, or do you you want to just uh, keep that? Nah, I don't want to step. I, I, I don't want to step on. I don't want to step on the 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 audible marketing rollout machine. promo machine. You know what I mean? Yeah. But just just know I'll be uh, making making that announcement real real soon. I do have now, an I do have an announcement. Two announcements. What you got one. Um, we got, you know, if all you guys are out there in New York City, uh, if you're looking for a podcast studio, Alex's podcast studio, Alex and Wheezy's podcast studio, uh, Whole Big Honky. Wheezy. I think it's called Whole Honky Productions. Up, whole Honky <laughs> Productions <laughs> is up and two, running. Hey, two, two half of honkies make a whole production. <laughs> I am not white. Stop it. <laughs> Half Honky Productions. <laughs> no, WTF Media Studios is up and running, man. So you guys can go check that out if you're looking to get into podcasts and you need a studio for your podcast, your Zooms, photography, all that kind of stuff. So make sure you check them out. They're on Instagram, WTF Media Studios. Uh, the website is the same. Go check that out. And then also, I got to say, um, I got to shout out Kevin Hart for doing the right thing, man. Kev did the right thing, bro. I I, yeah, I, I think that's cool. Let's talk about cool. that. It's a good deep dive. Let's talk about that. Yeah, he did the right thing. He did what creative should do. Tell, tell yeah. people what happened, though, for case, in case they don't know. Oh, so basically, Kev announced a new show where he's uh, talking to comics about uh, like what makes them comics and, I guess, their jokes and that kind of stuff. And he called it Inside Jokes. And he's launching this with Sirius XM, right? And I saw the rollout, and I was like, Yo, I I have a show called Inside Jokes where I'm sitting down with other comics and then we're working out these like, you know, horrible jokes that we have and trying to make them a little bit more pal palatable or easy. And I'm like, bro, you couldn't change the name just with smiley faces on the thing. And uh, I tweeted it and then some people, then I tweeted some other stuff as well. And uh, I wasn't really angry because I understand how this kind of machine works. And But at the same time, I was like, yo, you're a comic too. You're not just like some suit you're a comic. You should know that this is what we do and all we have are our creative ideas and it's very easy for people just to take them and run them. And um, so basically Kev heard about it and he said he, he sent a video basically apologizing. He posted it on his Instagram and he's like, yo, that's my bad. There's a show that already exists called Inside Jokes with Andrew Schultz. It's got millions of views. And um, so we're not going to continue to call it Inside Jokes. We are going to change the name. And a lot of people don't realize that changing a name isn't just flipping a switch like you have a promo rollout and he's done all these right. pre-reads you know pre-recorded reads right. for Sirius XM and there's a lot of work that goes into this so That's for right. him basically saying we need to change this because another creative has already done that it means a lot and he's big enough where he doesn't have to he could just bully it through so I think he sets an example as as something that creative should do and how we should treat each other and uh, I accept his apology, and I think that that's a stand-up move, man. And that was really cool. And also, season three of Inside Jokes coming soon. Let me let me let me let me elaborate on that because this is a lesson to be learned in all of this. You know what I mean? And it's not even about Kev, you know, because I know people will be like, "Oh, Charlemagne's biased when it comes to Kev." It's like Kevin Hart is a great human being. Yep. Like he's a genuinely good human. 
I base how I base how humans are on how they treat people that can't do anything for them. Mm. Like you said, if Kev wanted to, he could have bullied that whole situation easily. I'm so serious. Had I'm so serious, might have trademarked that shit, all of it. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. just out of the integrity of being a comic, integrity, mm -hmm. and knowing that the worst thing you could do as a comic is to steal from another comic, Kev was like, nope, we're going to change the name. That right there is, is respect. But I want to speak to the fact of just having the kind of integrity that makes you say to yourself, this ain't about me. This ain't about my ego. Mm. This ain't about me having to humble myself. I'm just doing what's right. That's it. Why is it so hard for motherfuckers to do what's right? Bro, it's... Like, like really? Yeah. Like, why is it difficult? It should not be difficult to do what's right. Yeah. I don't care what you see about a person on social media. I don't even care what your opinion about a person is, right? Mm -hmm. As long as that person is absolutely doing what's right. Yeah. That's all that matters. Yeah. And he's doing what's right. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And everybody should just do what's right. That's really the moral of the story and what I'm trying to say. That just do what's right. Yeah. Usually Why it's is it so difficult. You know, people see people see a dollar sign ahead of them and then they have tunnel vision for that dollar sign so they can't see the people that they might be hurting along the way. But I you know, Kev is in this situation where he's got plenty of dollar signs and he's able to and this is not to say that if he didn't he wouldn't but i'm saying maybe he's able to sit back and go i need to do what's right and no check is gonna change my morality or or any of these other things and for the record i don't think that he like knowingly took the show i i honestly think that no he didn't no i don't i really don't i'm not accusing him of that either what i am saying is that there are people on his team that are coming up with these names that should be doing their fucking googles you know because you're representing somebody who has a reputation you know, that you need to uphold, you know what I'm saying? So if like Alex media or Mark or any of Akash or any of my guys are pitching me an idea, I'm going to assume that they vetted that idea first, because if I'm putting my name on it, I could look crazy. So if well, you are, well, when you're a, no, no, I'm saying when you're a creative and you're a, a, a business owner and when you have, when you own multiple business, like Kev does, like you got your hand in, you know, so many different pots. Yeah. You are trusting on your team a lot more than you probably did when you was on your come up. Right. And, and that's, the, you have to, right. You know what I mean? You have to, 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 to stay mentally healthy, to stay emotionally healthy, you know, just to be able to just live your life and stay in a good headspace to create, you're going to have to trust in your team. And you're right. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there was people on his team who saw that, thought it was a great idea and thought they could get that off. Mm -hmm. they try, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You go, you, 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 you go to Kev and you know, you, you're trying to win favor with the boss. And you're like, look at this great idea. And, Ke and it is a great idea. It's already worked. <laughs> we know it's a great idea. There's proof it's Andrew a great made, idea. We, we saw it. The proof is in the pudding. There's a proof of concept already on YouTube, right? So Kev ran with it, <laughs> as he should have, because it's a good idea. But then right. when he realized it was somebody else's idea before, they bought it to him. You got to do what's right. And yeah. I've never seen Kev not do what's right. Every time I've seen, every time, this is not just in front of the camera, off the camera, Kev always does what's right. Yeah. That's a fact. Nah, I fucks with Kev, man. I fucks with Kev. He's been, that was a cool thing to do. Very, very cool thing to do. And that's why I can't wait for y'all to see what, uh, see, see the many things that me and me and Kevin have uh, cooked up with, with Audible. I'm excited, man. Audio scripted content. I think you it's know, great. Is, I'm about to say who. <laughs> What? What? You saw you saw a little I was looking by you. I was like, I was like, who's that with that nice little ass? Yo, <laughs> like, you see him, Mark? Hey, I'm in, I'm gonna show you who he is. Come here, come here, come here. You like I know this little now. thing? I saw when he turned to the side. Yo, you saw... like that little thing right there? Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You like that little <laughs> Hey, yo, you can have all he, this. Yo. You can have all this down in Miami, yo. Charlotte. <laughs> Listen, all I saw was Capri pants, a little fatty and a bun. I'm like, oh <laughs> shit, they in Miami <laughs> wildin'. <laughs> hey bro, the finer things in life. The f we didn't know he was packing all that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it took a trip down to Miami to be like, okay, Mark, I see you with the thumper. I see Mark. Mark, I see you. I see you, Mark. Miami looks good on you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Listen, also, you know what I want to talk about? Because we talk about, you know, shit that we just see on the internet. 
Yeah. Salute to Lil Uzi. You know I love Lil Uzi. Yo, I, yo, call, go, go, I, call, go, go. I call Lil Uzi a sassy savage. <laughs> yes. I'm telling y'all right now, if y'all believe that Lil Uzi got a $24 million diamond You're crazy. engraved in his head. You're crazy. If y'all think that Lil Uzi went and got a fucking infinity stone that's $24 million <laughs> engraved in his head like he's vision, you're out of your fucking mind. <laughs> that people just okay? believe anything, right? He got that shit at Claire's. Mm -hmm. I don't know where he got it from. I just can't believe people actually believe that that's a twenty-four million dollar diamond. Like, I don't yo, even believe I, it's a diamond. By the way, social media really is like Wanda off goddamn uh, Wandavision. They really is Scarlet Witch because you can create your own reality. Dude. Yeah, facts. Because that's what's happening now. I, like I love Lil Uzi. I, re I I I really do like Lil Uzi. I like him as a talent. I like him as a person. I don't know him personally, but I like what I see. Right. That's not a twenty-four million dollar diamond. Y'all need to stop running with that goddamn lie. That's like when you used to see people in the strip club throw 10,000, and then the headline would be, they threw 100,000 last night yeah, in the club. Yeah, yeah. It's like, stop, man. Stop, 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 stop. But what do you think it is? You know what? What do you mean? Like, what do you think the diamond is? Do you think it's a diamond at all? Do you think it's, like, fake diamond? Do you think it's, uh, what are they called, crystal I, or whatever those things, Swarovski? I don't know. I don't even know how many carrots or anything it is. I, I haven't I haven't researched it. I just know when I saw the headline that says Lil Uzi got a $24 million diamond in his head. Let me tell you something. If Lil Uzi got a $24 million diamond in his head, you thought Thanos wanted to snatch that shit out of goddamn <laughs> Vision's head at the end of fucking Infinity War. <laughs> you let these motherfuckers don't get their goddamn stimulus checks and shit keep going the way that it's going. Mm -hmm. Uzi ain't going to be able to just walk around. And that's mm -hmm. but my point with all of that is that's dangerous to say. Yeah. Why would you tell people that? Yeah. You put you a target. You got a $24 million diamond engraved in your head. Why put that kind of target on your back? On your head. <laughs> on your head. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little That's bit crazy, fact. but I do like his ability to create news. I admire that. You know, he's he's cultivated this like interesting. Yeah, he knows how to stir the pot. Like he's cultivated stir this water, interesting, baby. mysterious personality where like when he does something, anything, it seems so like random and obscure that people are drawn to it. And then it becomes part of the news cycle. You know, there are people that try so hard and they do so much to get attention this thing right here, who knows? He could have put took some Elmer's glue and just put a fucking crystal on his forehead, and now he's got the entire you know music industry talking about it, or all the blogs talking about it. It's impressive to see his ability to generate interest. Listen, I think it's dope that you can throw that out there and motherfuckers believe it. Yeah, there's some people that if you tell me that motherfucker had a twenty four million dollar diamond, the internet immediately be like, get the fuck out of here! Yeah, you don't got no twenty four million dollars. The fact that people believe, yeah, little Uzi could have a twenty four million dollar diamond in his head is impressive. Cause it says a lot about what people think about little Uzi's net worth. Yeah, he's got people thinking he, he has twenty four million to pay for that diamond. He, he did say he was making payments. He said he was making payments for years. I forgot how, how many years, but he did say he was making payments for years. Oh, okay, yeah. so he didn't buy he it straight up. That, did you see the picture of it? Yeah. What picture? Of it, it looks like it is in, embedded in his head because like, it looks like blood stains or something. But he could have just I'm, put that there, too. I'm, I'm not saying, saying it's not embedded. I'm just saying that I know that ain't no $24 million motherfucking diamond. <laughs> oh, so and you I'm don't glad, believe I'm, that it's not in his head, though? I believe I believe it could be in his head. I mean, I don't know how that works, oh, but I'm okay. believe, I believe they could put it in his head. I just know it's not a $24 million diamond. Mm. And he... And you got to give, is, is that, is that, is that Marvel appropriation? That's cultural <laughs> appropriation, bro. No, for real. Like, you're, that's, you're motherfucking appropriating fucking superhero culture. Yeah. Uzi. 100%. You're, 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 you're appropriating android culture. And How his, does Vision feel about that? His estimated net worth is 16 million. Estimated net worth is 16 million? Yeah. Good for him. See, that shit don't even add up. Good for him. He's got great Tony teeth, Man. though. Fantastic Man, teeth. I love Lil Uzi. I love Lil Uzi. I met Lil Uzi. When I remember I met Lil Uzi one time in my life, and Lil Uzi said, what's up? Nah. Nigga, what's up? <laughs> yes, he did. Nah. Man. I was like, I love him. I oh. Want, you know, I, I want to, I, they, they need to do a Peter Pan remake and let him be Tinkerbell. That's I'm not hilarious. even joking. That's hilarious. That's <laughs> hilarious. Dude, we got to talk about, talk about remakes uh, or casting. We got to talk about how you were cast in the Wendy Williams movie. How do you feel about that? Uh, People kept sending me pictures of the person playing you. How did I feel about it? I'm going to be honest with you, bro. I didn't know that shit was still a trigger for me the way it was. For what? Like, I, I didn't realize that whole situation was still a trigger for me 
the way that it was. Really? Like, I didn't realize that till last week. Yeah. Like I really I, I was on Breakfast Club and I I, I blurted out, I'll beat this shit out, Kelvin Hunter. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because it's a part of me that really does feel that way. And I'm sick of... To be honest, about the casting, I didn't really care about Say that. the that word, shit was, bro. Nah, that shit was funny. Say no, the I'm word. Saying, it's, it's like, Say man, the up. motherfucking like, word, bro. I'm not playing. You need me lifetime. to take care of somebody? You need me to take care of somebody? Knock you say the fucking word, bro. Yeah. I'm not playing but now. See, now see, I'm down it, here. It, but no, 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 no. I, I got I to gotta stop you. And the reason I got to stop you is because the internet's stupid. Okay. But the internet's not gonna realize that you're you're being sarcastic. I'm not. Playing. You know what I mean? They're retarded. I'm not being not sarcastic. Going. If you need somebody <laughs> handled, up, yo, if you need no, someone handled, it's Schultzy. It's Schultzy time. Listen. It's Schultzy. No, not, Look I'm at not, this, Charlotte. Let I'm me show even, you what I'm, could happen. No, no, Let no, me no, show no, you no, what I'm could happen. You see this? It. No. No. Fuck. I missed it. But nah, still, I'll get it. Listen. I almost cut my whole goddamn kneecap off when I did that shit just right now. Yeah. I, I didn't I didn't care about the casting of it, and the reason yeah. I didn't care about the casting because it's Lifetime. That's what Lifetime does. Lifetime mm -hmm. is terrible at casting. I don't even know why people give their 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 movie rights to Lifetime. It makes no sense to me, mm -hmm. especially people that actually mean a lot to the culture, like a Wendy Williams, a Salt and Pepper, whoever. Mm -hmm. But I said to myself, um, I said to myself, I really didn't understand. I under I know exactly why that shit triggers me so much, but people don't know. Okay. Because I've never to I've never told the story. So when people say things like, oh, Charlemagne sounds salty whenever he talks about, you know, Kevin, or he sounds salty whenever he talks about Wendy, it's reasoning for that. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? That y'all would never have well, maybe one day I'll tell y'all, but y'all would never really have any idea as to why. Because you didn't live that experience. You didn't I know. Work. I, I I was with Wendy and Kevin for every day of my life for three years, mm -hmm. and I and listen. I got love for Wendy. I'm not even gonna sit here and lie and act like I I don't have love for Wendy. I do have love for Wendy. Um, I, I do feel sorry for Wendy though, because I know Wendy that I know Wendy is a very hurt individual, mm. and I know she has a lot of lot of a lot of unhealed trauma that she probably will never ever truly honestly deal with. Mm. You know what I mean? But as far as Kelvin, don't rock with that dude. In no way, shape, or form. I don't fuck with him. <laughs> okay? There's no there's no amount of therapy, sacred purpose coaches, or anything that will make me ever truly fuck with him as a human being. Because I don't understand how somebody can be as blessed as he is. Mm -hmm. Remember how I was talking about the uh, Kevin Hart? Yup. Always doing the right thing? Yup. You got a guy like Kelvin who always does the wrong thing. You say the word. Always... Who always say the word. people. Say the word. And I, and, and, I, and I said it before and I say it again. I judge people based on how they treat people that can't do anything for them. I've watched him treat some people very shitty. And I know that, sure. you know, what, Taylor? No, I was going to have a question about it, about how you And I know, well, you. let me finish. And I know he put, I know he put me on Wendy Williams show, right? But just because somebody does something good for you, doesn't mean that they're good for you. And he's tried to take my head off a million motherfucking times over the last 10 years. What is that noise? Why well, sound like it's a waterfall all of a sudden? Yeah, y'all hear that? That's, I think it's Taylor's mic. Taylor. Oh. Mute yourself. And, that was her. And, 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 and we all know he's tried to got take her my head off on. a million <laughs> times over the past decade. You know what I right. mean? And the, la the last time was just ridiculously egregious because... There's no reason for you to feel that way about me. I think that it's possible, and again, I haven't seen it, right? I'm only seeing like clips, but maybe it's possible that uh, uh, in order for Wendy to express how awful her life was with this guy, she needs to build him up into this East Coast Shug super villain type, right? Because then she looks like even more of a victim under the clutches of this evil human being. But if he was this like pathetic kind of scared dude, as you're describing him, then she doesn't look as, um, she doesn't look as big of a victim. Is that possible? Oh, no, that's not true. <clears throat> and the reason that's not true is because just because you pussy with guys don't mean you're not tough with your woman. True. You know what I'm saying? Just because you, just because you pussy with guys don't mean that you're not, not, not tough with, not tough with, not tough with chicks, you know? Yeah. 
Like, no, nah, that's know, a good. Like you, you yeah, can be, that's you can be you can be you can be you can be mentally, emotionally, verbally, physically abusive with a woman. You just don't keep that same energy. Oftentimes, dude. those dudes that are pussies with guys take that out on people that they know that they can control. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So yes, oh, fuck. Yo, yo yell and scream. Yo yell and scream and at radio stations with radio executives. Yo yell and scream at TV studios with studio, with TV executives. Yo yell and scream. You know what I mean? With women. But you ain't going to do that with no dude. Right. You know what I mean? Right. That's just the truth of the matter. But. Charlie, did it bother you that in the movie that it depicted him as a better, like a better looking guy? Not by looking, but as in like. Hold I got to use the bathroom. I'll be right back. Nah, because that was a part of him. That was, I mean, that, he to, to act like he didn't hold Wendy down would be a total lie. I would never lie on him. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing I don't have to do. Like, he, that's what he has to do. He has to lie on me to try to make me look like something that I'm not. But I don't have to lie on him. I'll, he can lie on me. I'll just tell the truth about him. So, yes, the truth is, of course, he used to hold Wendy down. That was Wendy's husband. To act like, to act like he did not hold Wendy down would be a lie. But, once again, just because somebody's doing something good for you doesn't mean that they're good for you. Because they can be holding you down in one aspect because they have a vested interest in the business because they're your man manager but they can also be the cause of most of your insecurities they can also be abusing the fuck out of you you know no, what I'm, I'm saying were you up not upset but like with a little triggering because when we were talking about it on the breakfast club and they're like oh uh you know he didn't seem like such a bad guy and everything else does it bother you that other people are not seeing him in the light that you're seeing no because they don't they, they didn't they didn't live that experience with me once again i lived with them I worked with them and I lived with them off and on, but I, I was with them every day of my life for damn near three years. They didn't see what I saw. There's only a couple people who can vouch for the things that I've seen, like Nicole Spence, you know what I'm saying? My homegirl, Sleuth Nicole, who works at the Black Effect iHeartRadio Podcast Network. You know what I mean? That's our, that's our talent coordinator at the Black Effect iHeartRadio Podcast Network. But like Nicole is somebody who has witnessed what I've witnessed and seen what I've seen. You know, I can't, there's really not too many other people that that had the relationship that I had with them other than Nicole, at least for that, that three year run that I was there. So no, I'm not mad at that. It's just that people don't know. It's a fucking movie. That's just one side of the story. And that's that side they showed. Yeah, that was, that he did used to hold Wendy down. That's no, it's no lie about that. But uh, other than that, he's a sucker who triggers me. And you know how you you know he's triggered me? Because I've been talking about him for the past 10 fucking 15 minutes. This shit triggers me. I'm not going to sit here and act like it doesn't. All right? That's just something that I'm going to always have to constantly work at and constantly uh, let go. I'm going to have to constantly free myself of that sucker-ass motherfucker. Now, there's a body totally that honest. saying even the name Kevin then? Because we're saying Kevin Hart. That's not his name. His name is Kelvin. Name <laughs> Kelvin. The name okay. Kelvin triggers me, not Kevin. Kevin doesn't trigger me. Kelvin, Kelvin triggers me, and it probably will. And to be honest with you, it probably will continue to trigger me until like um, until I, I I decide to you know finally like tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Yes, you know I, mean? uh, I like that. Let's do that. that. Other than uh, other than that, I like I like I like sitting back and you know letting him suffer because I know my I know my success kills him. Yeah. Can we that's, tell the that's whole truth? To, that's why he's tried to stop it. But nah, not yet. Why would I do that when I can get paid for it? All right, well, let's get paid for it. Well, you get paid for it. I just want to be shit, there for the massacre. I'm just like that shit worth money. I'm literally like Heath Ledger in Batman in this whole situation. Like, I just want to burn that's why the you got pile the Joker of money. behind you. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. <laughs> no big deal. Subtle, subtle. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but I just want to walk out of the hospital and to see the whole thing burn to the ground, you know, let's do it. Well, let's our, make but, something. But, but, but here's the thing. And I want, I want, I want people to remember this, man. Yeah. There's really nothing you have to do because mm -hmm. everybody in life gets what they deserve. Good or bad. I need Ooh. people to understand that. Okay. In life, you get what you deserve. Good or bad. He tried to take my head off. And? His life went to shit, mm. and I'm not saying, and I'm not saying that's because of me. Mm. I'm just saying that that's 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 the way he's historically treated people. That's why I always tell you, anytime you want to see how somebody's eventually going to treat you, watch how they treat other people. 
what he did to me is what he's always done to people. Mm. And that's why, ultimately, shit caught up with him. That's a good point. It's like simple as that. Yeah. You exist in your karma. Eventually it's going to catch up to you and you're going to have to deal with the wrath of the decisions you've made good throughout your bad. life. You good know, bad. I don't give a fuck which I don't I don't give a fuck what you see. I don't give a fuck what kind of car you see a person driving. Yeah. I don't give a fuck what kind of money you see a person's making. You cannot escape your own fucking karma. That's a great point. That's what yeah. I always tell Alex. Like he wouldn't be in this situation if he didn't lie to me about building a studio. You know, if he literally was just Very honest true, about me, he would know that he's moving to Miami months ago. I like that you bring me up. Very true. I'm always reminding you to be positive when sometimes you get on your little diva moments mm -hmm. because I know it's going to come Ooh. back around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about that. Sometimes people need to suffer, Charlemagne. And uh, I like to be the person that introduces them to the suffering. I'm not going to lie. I like that. If it's war, it's war hey, forever. Man. No. Or until you're gone. Hey, man. So it's honestly not me. If it's war, now this is this is how I think about it. If it's war, it's war until I surpass you. And then once I surpass you, you don't even exist anymore. If anything, I have empathy. I feel nah. bad for you. But until then, you trying to put your foot on my fucking neck. Whew, we're gonna battle, my friend. Bro, and I will I'm, come out victorious. Listen, I'm I'm Psalm 23 5 with it. You prepare God prepared the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Man, I got to read you know the Bible, like, bro. The so many thing. bars in that shit. That's the best thing. Let's yeah. <laughs> say all the bars in that shit. Yeah, like you could just say some Bible shit for every situation and then you sound smart, right? Like that's what everybody does. Psalm 32, 46. You know what I mean? Sometimes the water has yeah. to trickle before you can drink it out of the lake or whatever. And then you just sound so smart and aware of your surroundings. I need to read the fucking Bible. When I, I'm going to put a button on it just by saying, yeah, the dude... Uh, Dude, Kelvin Hunter definitely does trigger me, but nobody can tell me how to feel about that situation because you mm. didn't live it. You know what I'm saying? And that's right. just something I gotta deal with. That's just that's just a that's just an unhealed trauma that I gotta I gotta deal with. And that's the other thing too. We talk about forgiveness, right? Yes. There's no such thing as one time forgiveness. Like we that shit sounds good. Oh, I forgive this person. No, you're constantly letting something go that traumatizes you. You understand what I'm saying? Like if something's mm. bothering you or something fucks with you, you may let it go for the moment. But there's going to be other moments that you're go something's going to happen that's going to trigger all of those same emotions and you got to let that shit go again. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, it's almost so, like uh, addiction. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like you're battling alcohol addiction every single day. When you decide to be sober, yeah. every single day you got to decide to be sober. And there are going to be things that you see that make you want to drink and you got to decide not to drink. And the same thing, I guess, works with trauma is what you're saying. It's like there are going to be little things that yes. make you go, oh, man, fuck that dude. And you got to check that That's shit right. constantly. You got to check it constantly because I swear, bro, I am Michael Jeffrey Jordan. I Now we're talking. Personal. Now we're talking, bro. Stop now it with that. You're personal. so woke and progressive shit. Let's grab, <laughs> listen, grab a machete and you go like this and you go back and forth. I took it personal. I took that personal. I took that personal. Hold on. Hold on. Me thank yeah, you personal. Gotta, you got to bust. Me thank you, man. You got to bust their ass with success. Huh? You got to bust their ass with, you got to bust their ass with success, show. Exactly. That's the way to do bust it. Bust their ass with success. We out here. Bust, bust their ass, ass with, success. with success. You know? Snorting on, lines with that I'm, fresh, crispy hundred dollar bill. We out here in Miami. Come on, man. I'm a New York. I'm, I'm a New York Times bestselling author. I'm a Radio Hall of Famer. Mm. I'm mm. a nationally syndicated radio personality. Oh mm. shit. Okay. Oh shit. I'm just saying. Oh shit. You know what I mean, I, fo I, I, I followed the I followed the paths of greats like Wendy Williams, like Howard Stern. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like you know those mm -hmm. are the, those those are the paths that I followed. So you know. Also. I think, also. Um, I think him. I'm. I'm. I'm almost positive him. Him seeing me be successful drives him crazy. Yup. And tell him seven three quarters in the winter. <laughs> eight oh, eight in the gonna summer. Talk dicks. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Talk dicks? Say what? Matter of fact, let's pay. Let's pay some bills. <laughs> <laughs> Dick Dick talk. Dick Listen, segment. let's pay some bills. Listen, let's pay some bills. I'm gonna take a piss. And I want to come back and I want to talk about dicks because this also is what I be talking about when it comes to social media and the illusions that exist and how we fall for any fucking mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. All right, let me stop and pay some bills. Okay. <sighs> I need some of this shit right now, matter of fact. Uh, Cushy Dream CBD. 2020 was a rough year. 
in a hard time to keep your head in a good place. That's why our friends at Cushy Dreams have been able to help. Okay, Cushy Dreams specializes in high quality smokable CBD. And CBD has been shown to help with anxiety, depression, even pain relief, fighting inflammation, and more. Cushy Dreams extraordinary CBD rich hemp flower comes in one eighth ounce cans and pre-roll joints. It is cannabis that ships discreetly to you directly to all 50 states. They offer specific indigo and sativa strains that deliver desired effects. Relax, create, hustle. What I need right now, some peace, okay? Because this fucking Kelvin Hunter guy got me triggered. Energy and dream, all right? How does it look and taste, okay? Tastes great, you know what I mean? It's smooth. Cool, it's relaxing, you know what I mean? It makes you feel great. I don't know why Andrew ain't sitting down in Miami right now with, 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 a, with a, a, a joint full of cushy dreams. You know what I mean? Sitting by the pool, enjoying his life. All right, Cushy Dreams has a great new flower that just arrived too. Thanks to a fresh harvest, they have apes of their best ind indoor indigos and sativas with their ultra premium line. As always, they have full grand pre-rolls. What's new is five packs of half grand pre-rolls. We know you're sick of carts, vapes, gummies, and want to smoke your CBD. Enjoy all of the health benefits of CBD without getting high, okay? Contains under 0.3% THC. Go to cushydreams.com, K-U-S-H-Y, at checkout and promo code IDIOTS for 20% off your next order, first, second, et cetera. All right, free shipping on orders over $20. Smoke your CBD with promo code IDIOTS for 20% off today. Cushy Dreams, smoke your CBD. Now let's get back to the show. Now we left off at Dick's, right? Let's mm. talk about dicks. It's been a while. Let's talk dicks. It's been a while since we've had some good old-fashioned dick talk. And I don't mind some dick talk. The only thing I have a problem with is this. Trey Songs was trending yesterday on, on Twitter. Everybody talking about this Trey Songs sex tape that came out. That's you good know, timing. How, how, how big Trey Songs is, right? It's penis size. My... Thing is this, and I told Taylor this earlier. I'm googling know it that's right now songs? as we're talking. I'm googling it. They are comparing the tats. If you saw the video, you can see what tats. The tats that he has on his on his arm. What do you mean? What tats does he has on his arm? I didn't see it's his arm. A, I just saw. It's a video. I saw, I saw a woman and a he's, big ass third leg. That's what I saw. I ain't seen okay, no arms. He his arm. His, he's holding her head down, or I at least touching that. it. I didn't see I that. Will. So listen, we, we record this on Wednesday. So if it comes out, you know, that it actually was Trey Songs, great. I'm wrong. I just be <laughs> wanting to know, how do y'all come to these conclusions about people? Yeah. Like, how did this like turn into that's Trey Songs' dick? Because we've seen this before. You would not be thinking about that if it was a small dick, Charlotte. I feel like you got <laughs> getting jealous. And if someone's like, oh, Trey got a small dick, you wouldn't be like, oh. No, I would oh. say the same thing. I would be like, how do y'all know that's Trey Songs? I would say the same thing. I'd be like, how do y'all know that's Trey Songs? I just don't know how people come to these conclusions. I thought Trey Songs' face was in the video. I thought he was on there going, yeah, something. I'm just like, how the fuck y'all know that was Trigger? I didn't think it was him at first because his dick's darker than his skin, but whatever. Wait a minute. That's so well, how big are we talking as far as his dick goes? I mean, I have the uh, iPhone Plus. a nice plus. fat size. Hold on. Trey okay. Songs. I didn't get jealous. Penis. It didn't trigger me. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. No, I'm not even joking. It didn't, you know, big like di big dicks usually trigger me. You know what I mean? I didn't get triggered. You know what I mean? So right. I mean, hey, I, you know, you know, I didn't get triggered by it. So you know, I, you know, I, I don't know. But where is the the send, 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 send him a send, send Andrew a I'm video. Andrew. Can you send me a picture? Is it hard or soft? It's hard. He's getting his dick sucked. Wait, hold on. Now what? He's getting his dick sucked. So do you even see most of the dick? Yes, because she doesn't suck it right. Oh, she doesn't suck it right. Well, if it's as you big as you're about? saying. Whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean she didn't suck it right? Well, let's see before we judge Taylor's reaction. Maybe we'll also clip. feel. Was she? <laughs> it was a clip version of it. So we, we didn't just send me the image and I'll tell you clip. whether she was sucking it right or not. It. If she's gnawing on the side of it like it's Andrew some Mexican knows. corn. If anybody knows how to suck a dick, it's Andrew Schultz. I know. <laughs> Hold on now. Wait a minute. I know how dicks should get sucked. I don't know how to suck them, but I know how they That's should how get sucked. That's not how you said it. You, you damn near put some words in my mouth, Charlemagne. As long as you're not putting something else in my mouth, I think we'll be okay. 
Oh, man. Hey, man, I, I might try you now. You told hold me that you know how to do it. you like, let me see. And you said it with conviction, too. You said it like you was not leaving New York. <laughs> you said it like you would not leave in New York, and New York is not dead. You said it with conviction. <laughs> Taylor, did you send it? I know you got to save She sent me a YouTube it. video. It's already blocked. You know who sent it to me? Trav sent it to me. Hey, oh Taylor, you sent me a YouTube video. It's already blocked. No, I just sent you again, Andres. It's still on Twitter. All right, let me see this fucking dangalang we got going on right here. Holy let me shit. Get this. I, need to, I, need, I need to get this goddamn play by play. <laughs> Let's hear it. Let's hear it, Schultz. So I mean, what do you think, Schultz? Honestly. <laughs> Okay, let's just say if it's fourth in inches, how many inches is it? Oh my God. <laughs> I think we got to do this one in metric. This is about a meter, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dude. You okay, so if you like that one, Andrew, you'll definitely like this one. You know what this is? Oh my God. Let me put it this way. If, wow, that's big enough where <laughs> you probably wouldn't go for it on fourth down. <laughs> you got a punt. Yeah. I think you got a punt. That one right there, bro. Yo, yo, that would be funny as hell if women saw you and be like, "Whoa, yeah. I'm punting." I'm punting. <laughs> this not fourteen there's inches. Some, there's, there's some inches. There's some inches I'll go for it, but no, but but I'm not this one. <laughs> bring, bring out Charlotte, the special the teams for this <laughs> dick. You need special teams for this one, Charlemagne. <laughs> <laughs> Trey Song's got special teams, Dick. <laughs> oh, Just my look at the other video I sent you. oh my god! But it is a very purple color. He looks like Thanos. This is what Thanos' yeah. dangalang definitely looks like, one hundred percent. Hey, be careful with that though, uh, Andrew. Delete that out of your phone because I was listening to um, because I saw I, I somebody called into the Breakfast Club this morning and they thought they they man was gay. Because they said he had a bunch of videos of people's dicks in his phone. Right. Well, I just took a video on Instagram with me and my male friend in a Mini Cooper today with the top down. So I'm gay. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. This is a fact. Whoever's dick that is in that video, I don't know if it's Trey Songs, his dick is bigger than a Mini Cooper. Okay. Taylor just sent me another video where it's a silhouette. But the guy looks like he should be filling up a car with gasoline. This is one of the longest dicks Thank I've you. ever seen in my entire Thank life. Thank you. It bends in Andrew. the middle. It has an elbow. It has an elbow. Andrew. Andrew. Yeah. Andrew, we don't know if that's Trey Songs. We don't know no, if that I'm guy. That. We don't know if that guy in the silhouette has a fucking toy on his body. I think is he's got true? a toy. I think it's a strap on. No, he's strapped nice. on a dick on That's his dick. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Tripping. I mean, I there's no way. Tripping. I'm promising Where's not. Hey, Taylor, yeah. where's all this dick when he's just wearing the pants? Where'd he hide all this dick when he's just in the pants? It's, exactly. It's exactly. soft. What do you mean it's oh, soft? Please. What did he do with it I'm as soft? That. You still, it needs skin. It needs something. That's huge. Why, what do, you he think had. Dicks are the, why do you think dicks are the Incredible Hulk? Okay. When they get soft, they don't get that this small. This sounds like a lot of jealousy right now, man. So All lot. I'm saying is y'all fall for anything <laughs> on Instagram. I'm, no, you know what I mean? He I'm has a, a page. I'm going to send you his page and everything else. You I see don't want to see his, his page. <laughs> I want to see his page. Nah. He shows his, he shows his <laughs> dick on his page? Nah, dude. That, that's crazy. What that guy just posted, forget what Trey. I mean, Trey's was impressive, and the color was very interesting, too. I mean, it was a very deep purple. It was a deep, deep purple. Okay, um, I would fucking throw some cheese and tomato sauce on that thing and make eggplant parmesan. That's what I would do with that thing. To be honest with you, I mean, it was way, a very this deep guy purple. Is hilarious. What? Taylor just sent, Taylor just sent me his Twitter. His name is Marshall Price. His Twitter handle is Mr. Gray, Gray Sweatpants Sweat King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At Gray Sweat King. <laughs> that is hilarious. No, but All that right, guy. Let's do some asking idiots, Taylor. Gray Sweat King has a weapon, okay. dude. That guy has a serious weapon. He could do internal Yo, damage to a woman. You have to be very careful. Like Taylor, I know you like to brag about how you could take huge dick. There's no way if you take that dick, you're gonna look like a shish kebab. You could be in a Turkish Honestly, sandwich. Honestly, AJ and Tammy said the same thing. Like Taylor, nah, like that dick's way too. Big. Taylor, nah. Taylor, Taylor. I'm telling you, I mean this 100% serious. <laughs> you need to be very careful. Okay. 
You need to be very <laughs> careful. Like I'm gonna fuck him. Not that dick you. was massive. You might be in his DMs. How do we know you're not in I'm his DMs? Not, you gotta get I'm out of his DMs not. for your own safety. You can make a halal guy's plate with that fucking <laughs> dick right there. You could literally shave off sides of that dick and make a whole plate. Whole plate. <sighs> oh my gosh. Unbelievable. All right, I'm tired of talking about big dick. Big big dicks is the only thing that triggers me as much as Kelvin Hunter. <laughs> I don't like how triggered right, you are. Um, okay, let's do some Ask an Idiot. So, someone, new breed, wants to know, do you two find yourself holding back some personality with all of your success now? Holding mm -hmm. back personality? What's that mean? I guess as in, like, uh, like who you are on the radio isn't, like, your, who you daily. But I feel like it is, though, Charlamagne. But I don't know. Do you feel like you're someone different off radio? Or off podcast or anything? I mean, that's a question for people who know me. I don't think so. You know what I mean? I think I think I think more so probably back in the day, but definitely not now. I am who the fuck I am. You can like it or love it. Cause truth be told, you know, we live in this era where for whatever reason people let social media dictate their thoughts and their ideas about themselves and other people. When the reality is this world is really no different than it's always been. And it's always been a rule of 10. Three people gonna like it, three people not gonna like it, four people gonna be on the fence about it. And then my father would always tell me, you're never as good as they say you are and you're never as bad as they say you are. And I think that if you're not willing to say something that you know people may not agree with, then I don't really know if I should respect your words like that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I think nowadays for me, it's just more so about, is, is this worth my time? Is this worth you know, the fight that may come with it? You know what I'm saying? You know, is it is it is it worth the energy that may come with it? That's mm. that's that's my biggest thing. Mm. Have I ch or have I changed? Is that the question you're asking? Not necessarily have you changed, but more so like, do you think that your personality mm. that you bring on like stand up or through the podcast is different from you in general? I think I'm gonna be honest. Oh with yeah, you. I think unfortunately Andrew is who he is all the time. <laughs> I, think so I think both of you guys are the same. I think both of you guys are the same. I think, I think unfortunately, yep. somebody told me a story the other day, yo, that I do not remember, and I think she's still lying to me, but they told me a story from about seven, eight years ago. when it, They said it was me, Andrew, and 6'4 in L.A. I still don't believe the story to this day. I'm like, that didn't happen. I said, I refuse to believe that happened. What happened? But it was just, it was just a story of, like, peak assholeness what, from, what we do from all of us you what know what I mean do. I mean it, it was mainly you but the funny part is when I said it to six I said to six I said six you know the homie said that it was me and you and Andrew and then this happened and that happened and then they got mad and cursed Andrew out and I'm like I don't remember any of this and six was like actually I think it was you they cursed out. I'm like okay I'm out wait what was it tell me tell me nope nope not doing it off air? I'll tell you off air. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, definitely, I'll definitely tell you off air. I, I, was Funny? Like, I don't remember this. Funny? I mean, to me, not to the person it happened to. To me, I thought it was funny. I mean, when I heard the story, I thought it was funny only because I'm sitting back. I couldn't remember it, number one, right? But number two, I'm like, that sounds like Andrew, but not really. Was I've never seen I've never seen him go that far. Was I being a wild boy? Was I being a little wild, wild boy. boy? Wild boy. I was being a little wild, wild boy. Wild, wild boy. <laughs> wild boy. Now, now there's a difference. If somebody tells me Andrew's being an asshole, I'm like, okay, that's Andrew. If they tell me Andrew's being disrespectful, I'm like, eh. And I know it's a fine line between being an asshole and being disrespectful. I've honestly can say I've never seen you be disrespectful, Schultz. Ah, huh. I've seen you. I've seen you being a dick. Not intentionally, so. Not intentionally. There you go. Yes. Not intentionally an yeah. asshole. Yeah. But everybody's per uh, per perception of things is different. You know what I mean? So I can't tell that person how they felt in that moment. I just honestly do not remember that night. But I was I'm it? Like I do not remember this. At was all. it funny though? Was it funny though? Nobody remembers except for her. She was the one telling me. Six didn't remember. I didn't remember. I'm Who like, was I don't it? know what Who you're was talking it? about. Who was it? Who was it? You're not even going to remember if I say their name. Really? Yeah, yeah, you're not going to remember. You're not going to remember. Do you what remember else? any nights in L.A. with me, you and Six? 
<sighs> I remember the night of I remember the night we were all in LA and it was after some award show. We went to the Rihanna party in the hood. No, that was another time. Which the one? The time that Six was with us was when we went into that Perez Hilton party. And we looked around. Oh, the gay party. <laughs> yes, we, we, we looked around and we was like, it's a lot of cheeks in here, but not the kind we hit. <laughs> I remember that vividly. We was, it was me, it was you, it was Duval. Wax was there, I believe. Six yeah. Four was there. Our guy Paul Richie, and we was in there having a ball. We was drunk as shit, and we looked around like it's a lot of fellas out Toto, here, bro. Hey, Toto, I don't think we in Kansas no more, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think this is Gary, <laughs> and that's and that's Reggie. <laughs> Okay, I don't know, bro. I didn't. That's the. That's what I remember. Six man. I don't remember anything else from that weekend, no, other than that night. Oh man, and yeah, you had the albino dude come through that ended up being like a TV star. Remember my that guy, guy? Crondon. That's Cron my guy. Don. Man. Yeah, that's my. That's my guy to this day. I love Cron. Yeah, he came through. I'm trying to think else. But when else were in LA? Where did Cron come through? I don't know. Where'd I think I remember him coming through. Oh, man, and then you had that other girl that was funny, man. She was cracking me up, dude. What was her name? Ooh. She's from, oh, my God, what the fuck was her name? She's from L.A., super L.A. character. She went to Roscoe's Lisa? with us. What? Lisa? I don't know, maybe. But oh, she's no, like, no, no, you're talking about May. You're talking about uh, Suge Knight's niece. Yes. May. Yo, she was a yeah, yeah. character, bro. Lisa was she there, was too. Lisa, killing Lisa was there, too, though. That, but see, that's... Those are other, that wasn't the same weekend. Really? No, all of those times were different times because the Rihanna time was, I think one of them was the MTV Movie Awards, one of them was the VMA. Like all of those times, were, we used to be out there all the time. But it, what about, was it when we went to Rogan, when we did Rogan? No, nah, that's because that was recent. This was, this was, you know, this was, this was pre cancellation era. This when you could get away with some baby <laughs> shit back in the this, <laughs> this, this is when we could be wild boys. Is this <laughs> yeah, this is a wild boy. This is before this is before even social media took off. This is when we were just wild. Like, what the fuck? This, was, this is when everybody used to be around each other. And you gotta think, these are savage days. So it's me, Andrew, Duval. Duval. We drinking, people are smoking. You gotta think everybody's trying to out savage each other. Yo, it really was that. So this is when wild shit used to be said. Nah, because we were <laughs> we were establishing boundaries, right? And like all three of us not really used to boundaries. So we're like, yo, how far can I go with these new dudes that I think I get along with? And then Charlotte would just say the wildest shit. And I was like, oh, I guess the boundary's over there. And then Duval would say some wild ass shit. I was like, ooh, the boundary's that way. I say some wild ass shit. It was really no boundaries back then, man. It was crazy. It was a crazy nah, bro, ass we time, wild, bro. We were some wild ass bulls, some wild ass bulls, bro. Bro, we were some wild bulls. <laughs> you know what I mean? Some, I really want to hear this story. Nah, we some, and I'm well, gonna tell you when I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you when the podcast over. Give us another asking idiot. Tale. All right, go. Well, to keep the stories coming, um, Tashin underscore Walkor wants to know what's the most weirdest shit you've done in your life. Try to pronounce your name, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, I don't think the I've, weirdest shit. I don't think I've done anything weird. Uh, you have Charlotte. Don't do that. Right, yeah, well, you uh, hug trees. You fucking sniff subject. crystals. You do a lot of weird shit, man. I did what? <laughs> I said you hug trees. You sniff crystals. You do a lot of weird shit. You're into weird shit. Nah, you okay. Jerked off on your knees. First of all, <laughs> you jerked off on your knees. First of all, bro, I still don't understand why people think that's strange. Honestly, if Trey Songs tried to do that, he'd get carpet burn on his dick. <laughs> dick all dragging on the carpet, dude. Come on, man. Oh my god. I don't think jerking off on your knees is weird. But once again, all that stuff is subjective. You know what I'm saying? Like subjective like where it's, why it's do things, you not think that's weird it's things that you do that are that people might think are weird Yo, can we stop judging sure. charlemagne charlemagne is trying to pleasure himself and show support for colin kaepernick and he found a great way to do it okay <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that at all <laughs> 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 he can't he can't be, he can't be doing grown man shit and fighting for the cause 
Oh my god. Oh my god, man. <laughs> Give me another one, Taylor. <laughs> this guy is so crazy. <laughs> All right. Um, John underscore fresh wants to know if you could write an executive order, what would it be? An executive, executive order? I'll tell you what I write. Open up New York. Crack that bitch open. That's my executive order. Let all these people that work in the service industry or have these small businesses, let them have their jobs, let them have their dignity, let them make a living and feed their families. That's what I would do immediately. That would be my executive order. Crack it open. Give them their fucking lives back, man. That would be my executive order, number one, day one. Yeah, I mean, my executive order would be definitely something that's going to make the money flow through the people. And um, I'm still wondering about that goddamn George Floyd. It's three things I would do right now. I would decriminalize marijuana. I would actually just legalize it all throughout the country. I would let everybody home who's in prison for a nonviolent drug offense. And it would have to be some type of, like, police accountability, like some type of immediate police reform like i don't know what it would look like maybe i like the george floyd policing act something mm. like that but yeah that's what i would push through immediately so it would be something to do with money making sure everybody got some change in their pockets something to do with le uh, legalizing marijuana and freeing everybody in there for a nonviolent drug offense and uh some type of police accountability that's what the fuck i would do which i'm shocked the democrats haven't done yet because that's all the shit they ran on don't be shocked How all the shit they ran on don't be shocked. They're going to continue to not do all the shit they say they're going to do, just like the Republicans are going to continue to not do all the shit they say that they're going to do. Bunch of not doers, these motherfuckers, man. Only Some of that shit is so simple, though. Yeah, but it is what it is, bro. It is what it is. There's nothing we could do about it. These people are putting these positions to lie. They're putting these positions to let us down. And it's, uh, it's, how, it's how the cookie crumbles, my friend. That's right. Absolutely fucking right. Listen, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you're listening to this podcast, but if you're listening to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening and thank you, Charlemagne, for coming down to Miami to continue the podcast. I really appreciate that. Everybody support that decision of Charlemagne. Have a good night. Uh -huh.